Hello and welcome to Claw Star Wrestling. This is a new short visual novel that is um, not safe for work, but I'm going to do my best to make it safe for you two. <laughs> um, it is a visual novel that was made and drawn and everything by Horror Buns, whose art you might recognize if you're on Twitter or if you've seen any of their work for some of like the visual novels, like um, The Smoke Room, and I think he's helped in other stuff too. But yeah, he's a very well-known person, so yeah. I like this whole small guy, big guy dynamic. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I don't really know much about the story since I'm going to go into this blind. Hopefully there's not a lot of stuff that I'm going to have to censor. Otherwise, I'm going to have to put it under the you have to be over 18 thing, which means no monetization. But anyways, uh, but yeah. So, yeah, well, let's begin. Ooh, naughty content. One, two, three. It's, it's all, all over, over folks. folks. Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, and gentlemen we, have we have your winner. winner. The crowd is going wild. The deafening roar rings in my ears. But their cheering isn't for me. Tremor! 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 Half conscious, flat on my back, sore all over. To top it all off, a massive dog's footpaw is pressing down on my chest. I look up through the blinding stadium lights to see Tremor, a towering beast that looms over me. He's cheering and boasting, basking in the adoration of the crowd. Another win for the Leon Burger wrestler. Half blinded by the spotlights shining down on the ring, I struggle to maintain my focus. I have to let this tremendous oak get it all out before I'm able to get on my feet. Come on, Tremor, how much do you need to celebrate? I wince as he leans in with more of his weight. The big dog grins as he looks down at me on the mat. <laughs> Good hustle out there tonight. Same time next week? He's trying to be cute with me, or he's just trying to piss me off. Either way, it's working. He resumes boasting and shouting, playing off the electricity of the crowd. How are they still going at this point? The announcer finally steps in to raise the victor's arm, and Tremor releases me from under his palm. I roll over to my side and try to catch my breath. This song and dance is what I have to endure every Friday night. Wrestle a monster three times my size, put on a good show, and let him mop the floor with me. It doesn't help that he is insanely attractive. I would probably be enjoying all of this under different circumstances. Maybe that's why I keep coming back to wrestle him. Wow, I must be delirious. I have to whisper quietly to myself, maybe being deprived of oxygen that long is finally getting to my head. Tremor makes a big show of his victory, traveling to each corner of the ring to show off. Please tell me that I don't actually have a crush on this guy. Finished with his victory lap, the now worn out Leonberger makes a point to step on me as he makes his way out of the ring. I make a well noise as the big dog casually tramples my body. I can hear him laughing as he makes his way out towards the back of the stage. A few moments pass as I recover from the pain. God damn it. I have a crush on this guy. The roar of the crowd dies down now that the victor has left the stage. We're the last match of the night, so everyone starts shuffling out of the building. I'm finally able to collect myself, first on my hands and knees, and then, through some effort, back on my feet. You could have at least tried to hold back, Tremor. I wince as I hold my ribs, a bit sore, but nothing that I haven't dealt with before. All things considered, it was a better night than most. No cheering for me. No applause. Just another Friday night has a jobber for the logo heel. I stagger out of the ring and move onto the walkway leading to the backstage area. Despite feeling like I've been run over by a steamroller, I hold my head up high. We put on a good show after all. 
How thrilling it must be to see Goliath utterly flatten David. This crowd certainly loves to see a good squash match. Or is it that they just love to see me getting flattened? Either way, the match is done. I'm getting paid, and I put in my best. I'm not here to be idolized by the crowd. I just want to make sure everything goes off without a hitch. And if I do my job right, no one gets hurt. Bruised and battered, maybe, but not hurt. The hour has been pairing me with Tremor more and more lately because the other wrestlers don't know how to work around his brute strength. He's clumsy, and he's always causing problems for the boss and me, but he sure knows how to rile up a crowd. I'd be cheering for him too, if I wasn't the one getting crushed by him every Friday night. Not in the ring, at least. I catch myself with those thoughts again. Wait, what am I saying? It's hard for me to try to act like I'm not enjoying it all. I can't let a guy like Tremor know that I think he's hot, though. Not telling how he'd leverage that against me. I make my way off the main stage, back through the small hallway that leads to our locker room. Thankfully, 3KO is a big enough wrestling organization to provide some decent facilities to their wrestlers. Free gym, free tacos on Tuesdays and Thursdays, just gotta get here before the bigger guys hog them all. The pay isn't amazing if you're the one getting your ass kicked, but hopefully with the crowd that we pulled, tonight's paycheck will be worth it. I love wrestling, even if I'm the one getting used as a footrest for some massive jerk. I feel so alive when I'm out there in front of the crowd. I'd give anything to keep from going back to some mundane job stuck behind a cash register again. But I also need to figure out what's going on with me. Why do I have a crush on the guy who's getting paid to crush me in the ring? As I make it back to my locker, I sigh. The locker room seems empty, but I can still hear the murmurs of the crowd departing the building. <sighs> Another match in the books. I'm ready to get my paycheck and hit the bar. I'd say a rough night like this calls for a beer or two. Or six. At this point, I strip down to my jock strap. I've set aside a towel and flip-flops in to get ready for a shower. I take a moment to rest on the bench, holding my head in my hands. I need to clear my mind. Maybe Arla will have some advice about this whole tremor situation. That's when I hear a heavy set of footsteps approach. Around the corner comes the massive Leon Burger, staring me down wearing nothing but a white grin and a towel. He leans up against the locker, and I catch a nose full of a scent from the raised arm. Great, he's the last person that I need to see right now. The what situation now? Fuck. Uh, nothing. It's nothing, just thinking out loud. Did he hear me? Fuck, it's hard to tell if someone this thick-headed is actually thinking. I didn't know that you were still here, Tremor. Quick, change the subject. Shouldn't you be off celebrating somewhere? He grins down at me on the bench. Tremor manages to look even more imposing than usual from here. What? I can't come check in on my little buddy. Check in on me? Since when do you care about how I'm doing? <laughs> no need to get snippy. Can't a guy just chat? I can't help but glare up at him. I genuinely can't tell what his angle is here. He's barely said two words to me outside the ring, but ever since we started wrestling together more... Right. That's your awesome crowd tonight, right? <laughs> they loved watching every second of me wiping the floor with you. <laughs> oh, he just came here to gloat. Terrific. You don't need to remind me. I was there. Oh, come on now. Isn't that just what you love? Putting on a good show and all that. We sure gave them their money's worth tonight. <laughs> Speaking of putting on a show, mind covering up? Right in front of me, I can see the tip of his <laughs> peeking through the slit of the towel now. God damn it, he's huge. Of course he is. My eyes are up here, bud. Well, I guess you will be happy to get a peek after all this time wrestling together. I quickly look away. If this is his way of trying to get under my skin, it's working. Shut up. 
<laughs> Figure as much. How's about we go celebrate my win tonight? I will even let you buy me a drink. Is he trying to flirt with me? After all that shit in the ring? What the hell is this guy's deal? Fuck off, Tremor. I just want to hit the showers and be on my way. <sighs> no need to be rude. I was just trying to be friendly. You should be lucky to get to share the ring with me. I'm only in the ring with you because no one else wants you to break their neck. The smug grin is quickly replaced with a scowl. What was that, you lippy little fox? You heard me. Why, you little... I don't want to deal with this shit right now. You're a sloppy wrestler who only gets by because I'm here to make you look good. He scoffs. What are you calling sloppy while you're licking through your jock? Wait, what is he? He points down at my crotch. Fuck, fuck, fuck. It takes me a second to realize that I am hard as a rock right now. Why is this happening now, in front of him? I quickly try to cover up myself with a towel I've laid out. It's pointless though, Tremor's already seen it, and now has a huge grin on his face. So that's how it is, huh? Little Jobber gets in the ring with the big sloppy wrestler, because what? You have got the hots for me? N no shut up. Can you just fuck off? Oh, come on now. You sure you don't want the piece of all this? Tremor drops his towel intentionally, letting me get a good look at him. Fuck, he's not wrong. Look, I could just leave you to deal with that little situation of yours. Or... I gulp as he casually strolls towards me. You can lay down on that bench and show how much you love losing to the better wrestler. You're such a fucking dick. I am not the one trying to hide a boner, buddy. Why not give in and have a little bit of locker room fun, huh? I look away again. My face is bright red. Is he being serious right now? Why should I even listen to this asshole? I wish he would just fuck off. But at the same time... Am I ever going to get a chance to indulge like this again? Maybe I should listen to the boner. I give a defeated sigh and lay back on the bench. Fine. I feel so stupid. Why am I folding like this? <sighs> That's what I thought. I can hear the smug satisfaction in his voice as he approaches. The bright lights on the locker room are soon blocked out as the huge dog moves forward, looming over me between his legs. He looks gigantic from this perspective. In one swift motion, he slams his massive ass right on top of me. <laughs> I grunt as his hefty frame settles on my chest, his ass wiggling to find a comfortable spot. Over 500 pounds of pompous Leon Berger now rests firmly on top of me. Tremor chuckles as his sack, fragrant from tonight's performance in the ring, settles over my muzzle and nose. What? Go see a nug for you? He starts to gyrate his massive ass on my body. Labored groans are forced from my compressed torso. The smell of the sweat fills my nose as a massive paw presses against the back of my head, pushing it deeper into the fur of my crotch. That's what I thought. A twerp like you needs a good reminder of who's the top dog around here. I struggle in vain to free myself as my arms press against the Tremor's tree trunk thighs, but the dog remains planted steadfast. A mountain of bulk, slowly but surely grinding my ribs into a fine dust. Tremor is besides himself with laughter, fully enjoying the situation at hand. See? Now you will enjoy it. I knew you will sub yourself to all this without some ulterior motive. You must have been trying to get me to do this to you for ages now, huh? If all the blood wasn't already being forced into my head by the immense pressure, I would be turning red from embarrassment. He's not wrong, but this is the worst way for him to figure it out. Why did he have to find out on a night like this? Several excruciating moments pass before I feel the massive weight lift from my body. I gasp for air and clutch my ribs as Tremor continues to stand over me, 
he's got that stupid smug grin on his face again. Slowly coming to, I'm surprised to see what's looking back at me. The brute is sporting a full erection, letting it dangle mere inches from my face as he looms over me. This is just what you wanted, right? Getting used and abused by such a big, strong man? Before I can formulate a response, he steps away, leaving me stiff and breathless on the bench. Well, I'm flattered, really. Maybe I will let you suck me off once you get some wins under your belt. I'm panting heavily, speechless. Catch you later, Helai. With a wink, he leaves me lying there, sore, humiliated, painfully erect. God damn it. Why does he have to be such an asshole? And why does he have to be so fucking hot? God damn it. I heave through my words as I try to catch my breath again. If my ribs weren't bruised before, they sure as shit are now. The throbbing in my teeth begins to ache as I catch the lingering scent of Tremor's balls on my nose. Now I have to take care of this too? I'm beyond frustrated and flustered. All I can manage to do is slam my fist against the locker as I try to process these stupid feelings of mine. The cold water washes over me, and I let out a long sigh of relief. I don't know if there's any science behind it, but the icy cold always soothes my ache. The physical ones, at least. My torso is still a bit tender as I scrub up. I sigh again as I lather my body. <sighs> Way to go, idiot. You mouthed off to someone you've been crushing on and got crushed for your trouble. Now he definitely knows. Fuck. I just want to get my check and get the hell out of here. Hopefully Lyra is in a good mood tonight. I don't think I could stand anything else going wrong tonight. Even after towel drying, I swear I can still smell tremor lingering on my muzzle. I don't hate it. But I also fucking hate it. By this point, all the matches have finished, and the crowd has since dispersed. Only thing left behind is their empty plastic cups of beer. As I look around to find Lyra, I see her talking with a few people by the manager's office. A mountain of a lion in a suit, and I think he's wearing a mask. He's standing stoically behind a black cat, who sticks out like a sore thumb. This smaller guy is wearing a well-tailored suit, my guess is expensive as hell, and talking Lyra as ear off. I can see how annoyed she is even from here. I should probably wait around until they're done talking. I don't want to be rude. I wince as I feel my whole body ache. <sighs> Didn't work out so well for me last time. An awkward few minutes pass by and Lyra waves off her mysterious guest, giving me a chance to catch her as she's walking back to the office. She waves as she sees me. Elijah, I was wondering when you'd show up. Just came to collect my check and leave. Uh, it's been a rough night so far. Figured as much. Already saw Tremor on his way out. Told me that he bumped into you in the lockers. I furrow my brows. Yeah, that's one way of putting it. Something wrong? I shake my head sheepishly. No, no, just getting rubbed the wrong way tonight. In more ways than one. Yeah, I'll be alright after some rest and... Um, I hold up my hand. She rolls her eyes and hands me my check. I eagerly pluck it from her and take a look. Checking the amount, my heart sinks a bit. Uh, this can't be right. This is it? For all that work? I thought we pulled in a huge crowd tonight. Liara sighs and puts her fingers to her temple. She's thinking of how to break it to me softly again, but I interrupt before she speaks. I'm busting my ass dealing with Tremor since no one else will. What gives? Look, Elijah. You're really good at what you do. I know it. You know it. And I'd wager to guess Tremor probably knows it as well. If that thick skull of his is capable of forming thoughts. Right? And? Being good at getting your ass kicked isn't what's pulling in the crowds. 
Tremor is. You're really good at getting crushed by him, but that's not enough to sell tickets. That's bullshit, and you know it. I can feel myself getting heated, agitated by my already sore body as I clench the measly paste up in my hands. I'm not trying to talk down to you, Elijah. It's getting hard to convince people to keep coming back for the same match. I can't sell a jobber who keeps getting pounded by the same guy every week, and no one else wants to step in the ring with that brute. Either you need to drop him, or I'll have to drop both of you. I freeze. It seems like such a simple solution, right? Just get rid of that jerk, but... You say like it's such an easy thing to do. The guy's an ass, but he gets how to put on a show. Way better than most guys here. Wait, why am I defending him? It takes two to put on a show, but we don't have any guys to keep up with him other than you. You see where my issue is, right? Right. I don't like being an asshole, but there are plenty of other wrestlers eager for a chance to make it here. We're not a huge promotion, but most of the guys here aren't interested in ending their careers early wrestling someone as reckless as Tremor. I don't like the sound of that. Not one bit. Look. I struggle to find the right way to articulate my thoughts. I don't want you to have to fire him, but I don't want to get fired either. Then you better figure out a way to make it work. I just... Uh, I just... I clutch my head. This is all too much right now. What a shitty night. Look, I just need some time to think this over. Is that alright? Liara looks me over. She has a hint of concern in her eyes as she sees the state I'm in. <sighs> Fine, but you're going to have to make a decision soon. Elijah, you're a great wrestler. But you're going to have to step it up or step out. There's just no room in the big leagues for jobbers like you, kid. No matter how skilled you are. The words pierce right through me. My shoulders droop, and I let out a sigh. I know, you're right, as always. Just... Fuck. Eli. I walk past her wordlessly, and I can feel her eyes on my back as I try to hold myself together. I let out a sigh. This night has turned into a huge fucking mess. I fold my paycheck and stuff it away in my wallet. Measly as it is, I can at least pay rent this month. Going to be a bit tight with groceries, though. I step outside and meet the crisp autumn air. The cool wind is a welcome change to the stuffy venue. No dude smells, no sp spilled beers and popcorn, just night sky. I take a deep breath in, and I'm immediately reminded of Tremor as the scent lingers on my whiskers. Oh, fucking course. Can't even enjoy the peace and quiet without thinking of him. But I notice that it's not entirely quiet on the streets tonight. Looking out across the venue parking lot, I see small circles that have remained after the show to talk about the night's matches. A lot of heated debates about who's going to come out on top in the local leagues and who has potential to get scouted for bigger organizations. A couple mentions of Tremor. A few murmurs about the up-and-comers that I haven't even had a chance to chat with yet. Guess those are the guys aiming to replace me, huh? These intrusive thoughts aren't doing me any favors. I try to shake them off. I throw my hood up and quickly try to put some distance between me and the building. I've had enough excitement for tonight, thanks. Shuffling past the small crowds, there's not a single mention of my name. Hell, I probably just look like another spectator to them right now. No one's going to pay attention to the jobber, to the guy who just got sat on by the massive showboating brute. I can't help but think about that dumb smug grin of his. His huge sweaty body looming over me. Wait. Damn it. Please, Brain, no more tremor tonight, okay? Just let me walk in peace, please. No response. Three blocks is a long way to walk, giving me plenty of time to reflect on how little I got going on in my life right now. The only thing that I'm really good at is wrestling, and even that prospect is looking shaky right now. Liara's words bounce around in my skull, and I can't shake that look of pity in her eyes. Damn it, I like being a jobber. Why can't that be enough? 
I'm not here to see my name in lights, I just want to wrestle. My ears droop and I let out a defeated sigh. Every step I make towards the bar hurts and every second I spend thinking about that night makes me more and more depressed. I try to move a bit slower to ease the aches. The five minute walk takes me 15, but finally I arrive at my destination. The neon letters illuminate my face as I look up to see my favorite glowing sign, the lucky dog. I chuckle and I can feel my aching body complain about it. I don't know which stings more right now, the irony or the bruises. I make my way through the heavy door and I'm confronted by the familiar sights in my favorite gay bar. Dressings of pride flags weird little tchotchkes hanging off the walls and plenty of people, all who seem to be having a much better night than me. I have to stand on the tips of my toes to get a good look at the bar. Thanks, Fox Genetics. Hoping to score a good seat. Thankfully, there's a spot open with room on either side. No one to bug me as I stew in my misery. The bar stools here are just tall enough to make me feel awkward sitting in them. I drop my hood and shake out the fur. It's much warmer here than outside, but I leave my jacket on for the time being. I start looking around the room hoping to find a familiar face. As my eyes return to the bar, I find that there's already a cold beer waiting in front of me. Evening, Elijah. Figured you'd be showing up here tonight. Arlo, owner of the establishment and likely the only real friend that I have right now. The friendly bass of his voice is enough to soothe my ears right now, even through the rowdy conversations of the crowd. How are you holding up? Not great, if I'm being honest. The kangaroo looks at me sympathetically. It's not hard to tell that I've been through the ringer tonight. I caught the match tonight. You were doing good out there. Think so? Yeah, well, up until you weren't doing good, at least. You know how these things go. It's my job to make it look mostly convincing. I'm mostly convinced that you're going to get hurt if they keep making you wrestle that huge fella. He pauses and shoots me a concerned look. Are you actually alright though? Looked like you put in some extra work at the end there. As fine as I can before being steamrolled by 500 pounds of asshole. He chuckles. <laughs> now there's a pretty mental image. Arlo slides a glass of beer my way. It's the cheap stuff. Have a few in the house, will ya? I down the glass immediately and don't let up until the last drop. Haha. <laughs> Thanks, bud. I'm not some charity case, though, alright? Not according to your bar tab. Just let me treat you for the night. You look like hell. He refills my glass as soon as I set it down. This isn't the healthiest way to clear my mind, but it's helping. I take more reserve sips on my second drink not wanting to overdo things before I even get a chance to catch up. Trust me, I feel much worse than I look. Ever have a fully grown Leon Burger slam his body into yours at running speed? Can't say I've had the pleasure, no. Well, I wouldn't really recommend it. Maybe not in the ring, at least. Arlo chuckles, resuming his duties behind the bar. I try to let Arlo steer the conversation more into what's been going on with him in a desperate attempt to avoid saying something stupid. He tells me about some recent exploits, cute guys who've come through, and a little bit about the new knots he's learned. Arlo's quite handy with the rope. I've come to learn really into tying guys up and getting tied up. The kangaroo is impressive to watch when he's in his element, both at the bar and in a more intimate setting. Maybe I'll have to show him some of my new stuff when my body isn't feeling broken. I've missed this, just chatting about this and that. Hot dudes, Arlo's flings here and there, what new games are coming out soon. We've had long conversations like this in the past about the different things we like. It's nice being able to talk so casually about the kind of guys I'm into without being judged. Bigger men, of course. Ones that can easily manhandle me. Kinda like... Oh. Right. Him. We're able to maintain small talk while he moves around to help out the other patrons, making sure to refill my glass each time it's 
gets set back down. I fill him in on the shitty details of my night, opting out of the particulars of my run-in with Tremor. Arlo can pick up on the fact that I'm hiding something, but doesn't press me for more details. Well, shit, Eli. I'm sorry to hear about all that. Yeah, me too. I know it's probably the last thing you need on your mind right now, but any idea how you're going to handle this mess? Not a goddamn clue, Arlo. I bury my head in my hands. This is almost too much to take right now. I can't seem to think straight, and the beer's not helping. To top it all off, I think I have a crush on Tremor. Can you believe that shit? Wait. Shit. Why did I say that out loud? Shit. Arlo looks at me, half surprised and half expectant. Er, uh, um, wait. I meant... Well, at least now you know. <laughs> the kangaroo grins at me, smug. Wait, what? Are you saying... You're not that hard to read, Eli. You think I can't put two and two together? Little fox who loves to get crushed finds a big smelly dog who loves to crush him. Of course you would have a thing for that guy. I'm just shocked it took you this long to figure it out for yourself. I throw my hood over my head and groan, face down on the bar. Oh. My. God. I'm not supposed to feel this way about a jerk like that, right? Am I crazy? Well, maybe a bit, but not for a little crush. Or big crush, as it were. I stay face down, too embarrassed to even meet Arlo in the eyes. Am I really that transparent? And then what? What do you mean, what? What do I do? Hard to say. Have you tried maybe just talking to him? Last time I chatted with him, I ended up getting my face shoved into his sweaty crotch. He blinks. Oh, right. I wasn't going to tell him. I thought that's what you were into. Shut up. Yes, it is. Fuck. But now he knows. And now you know. And now I don't know what to do. Fuck. All my feelings are starting to pour out, and it's taking all the self-restraint I have to keep it together. What the fuck is wrong with me? I let my head fall to the bar with a thud. Ow. Why did I do that? Why do I do any of the things I do? Fuck. I feel Arlo reach out and place his hand on my shoulder. Whoa, whoa, hold on now, Eli. I'm not trying to get on your ass about this. I just want to help you out. I must look like I'm out of my goddamn mind right now. I take a second to try to catch my breath. Bring it all back to center, Elijah. Steady now. Okay, okay. Get it together. I slap my own face a few times. Ow. Still sore. Arlo watches wordlessly as I take a few deep breaths and remove my hood. Back to normal. Well, normalish. You good? I'm good. Yeah. Sorry. No need for apologies. You're having a rough night. It happens. But the sooner you talk things out with them, the sooner you can figure out what it is you want to do about it. Okay, yeah, you're right. Maybe I should just go talk to him. Arlo clears his throat. <clears throat> well, lucky for you. Arlo subtly gestures at a table behind me with his eyes, trying his best not to draw any attention. I try to be as nonchalant as I can, but I have to fully turn around to get a good look. There he is. Tremor is sitting at a booth, surrounded by his loud-mouthed friends. They're all laughing up a storm, but Tremor is sitting quietly with a different expression than I would have expected. I think he's... upset? What does he have to be upset about? I've seen him angry plenty of times, but nothing like this. Is this really the same loudmouthed jerk that was grinding his ass on me two hours ago? As I speculate the cause for his sullen expression, Tremor looks up and we briefly make eye contact. He looks just as surprised as I am when we lock eyes. Shit, shit, shit! I jerk my back around and try to keep low. Shit. Do you think he saw me? The kangaroo takes a brief glance past me. Pretty sure he saw you, yeah. God damn it. Now he's going to think that I'm stalking him or something. 
He's not still looking, is he? Arlo chuckles to himself as he starts to take a few steps back. He's doing more than that. I think he's on his way. Better set up straight. I'll give you two some space to figure things out. I mouth a wordless plea for him to stay as he steps away to help another guest. That's when I hear his voice in my ear. Uh, Elijah, is that you? Not as loud or gruff as I was expecting. Guess he must be tired from all the boasting earlier. I take a moment to reply, letting my thoughts run their course before opening my mouth. Yep, it's me. <laughs> I thought it was you. He points up to his own head. The uh, hair really stands out. I sit there at the bar, at a loss for words. I have so many things running through my mind, and I just can't seem to find what it is that I'm trying to say. Look, I, uh... Hey, I'm not here to start shit again. I just wanted to... You know. What? He rubs the back of his head. If I weren't a few beers deep, I'd say he's a little flustered right now. I'm not good at this. You just uh, give me a second to think. I go back to sipping on my cold drink. Take your time. The pause is awkward but brief. Look, all I'm trying to say is... Before Tremor can get any words out, I see his friends have surrounded us at the bar. More unwanted company. Great. Oh shit, is this the guy? Yeah, it's gotta be. Holy shit, <laughs> Look at this little hair thing. Dude, you got annihilated out there tonight. How are you still in one piece? Must be crazy to want to get in the ring with this guy, right? Haha, <laughs> look at him. He's a lot smaller in person, though. I'm surprised Tremor didn't flatten him down in two dimensions. They all laugh rancorously in my ear. Tremor stands silent while my face is burning red. So he just came over here to fucking embarrass me again? Huh? Is that it? That's it. I'm out. I quickly hop down from the bar stool and try to shove my way into between the huge rhino and bull that are blocking my exit. Where are you off to in such a hurry, little man? Yeah, we were just joking around. No need to get in a tizzy. Get the fuck out of my way. God damn it, they won't budge. These drunk assholes are blocking my only way out. Oh, come on. I thought you'd at least be strong enough to move us. <laughs> I don't need another fucking fight on my hands tonight. He said to fucking move out of the way. Tremor's voice booms loud enough to shake a few glasses and bottles, and their laughing stops immediately. The whole bar is now awkwardly silent as everyone's eyes turn our way. Tremor's stupid friends make way for me as I storm out the door. Despite the silence, I barely hear Tremor over my own raging thoughts as he calls out to me while I'm leaving. Elijah! God damn it! Wait! The heavy door flings open as I push through. I swear if it wasn't Arlo's bar, I would have kicked it off the hinges. I'm such an idiot. I can barely see thanks to the tears welling up in my eyes. Perfect. Now I'm crying too. God damn it. Why does it feel like the universe is out to get me tonight? I stop on the empty sidewalk in front of the bar. Thank fuck no one can see me like this right now. I just want to scream into the void. The heavy door swings open again behind me. Then I hear him. Ellie, wait. God damn it. Please, just give me a second. I turn around and cast a glare that stops the massive dog in his tracks. What, Tremor? What? What do you fucking want from me? Is it not enough to humiliate me in the rain that you need to do it in front of all your drug friends too? Tremor remains silent. He won't even look me in the eyes right now. There's been enough bullshit tonight. Please, just leave me the fuck alone. He lets out a huge sigh and looks up to meet my eyes. <sighs> I can tell he's upset. Why is he upset? What possible reason can he have right now to be upset? Look, I... He pauses a moment. Uh, I just want to say that I'm sorry, okay? Sorry for what? For how you treated me? Or for getting me worked up and ditching me once you've had your fun? Both. Fuck, I just... You just what? I'm sorry! He shouts the words at me. 
I really don't know how else to say it. Tremor stops to look away, trying to choose his words carefully. That's a first. I wipe my eyes with my sleeve of my jacket and shove my hands in my pockets. I start to ease my posture up as he goes on. Look, I put on a big fucking show every time we step into the rink. And, you know, I'm just too stupid to turn it off sometimes. All the times I have been a dick to you, really, I'm sorry. You might not believe me right now, but really, I am. His shoulders drop. You were right earlier, in the locker rooms. I wouldn't be where I am without you busting your ass out there for my benefit. The thought never crossed my mind tonight before you actually said it out loud. And the fucking course my fragile ego couldn't stand it. Wait, he actually listened to something that I said for once? And he's agreeing with me? Lyra knows it too. She told me as much when I ran into her tonight. She said that I need to get my shit together or she will drop my sorry ass from the roster. I have been chewed out plenty of times, but she really made her point clear. I really am just a slab of meat that's barely getting by. You two really are the only people who've even made an attempt at pointing that out to me, and Lyra did it because of her bottom line. It feels like you're the only one who tried to get it through to me because you cared. I have scared off everyone else, and you're the only one who really seems to give a shit about all this. Tremor gestures with his hands to help try to articulate his point. He still isn't looking me in the eye. I take a moment to think, letting the silence fill the air. Does he really mean what he's saying? Is he just drunk? The sudden shift in his attitude is weirding me out right now. Is his apology genuine? Am I even still mad at him? God damn it, Tremor. Liara told me the same thing, more or less. She said that I need to move on from jobbing for you or she's going to get rid of the both of us. His ears droop and he sighs. I've never seen this side of him before. For once, he's letting me see him be vulnerable. You are probably better off without me. Tremor. You actually know what you're doing out there. Well, I'm just dragging you down. I'm a heel for the crowd and nothing else. I let out a sigh that I feel I've been holding all night. <sighs> I don't want that. I don't want to stop wrestling, but I also don't want you to stop either. Tremor finally looks at me. I can see the tension in his shoulders start to release. It's a small relief to hear the big dog actually listen every now and then, but it sure as hell took him long enough. Listen to me. I just need you to actually give a damn when you're in the ring. You know what the audience loves to see but you barely know how to keep yourself safe. Do you even realize how many times you've botched your moves? I've had to work twice as hard to make sure neither of us wanted up getting hurt. So stop acting like such an asshole and let me help you. I know, I know. I have been so shitty. I'm sorry. He sighs and looks away again. I ease up. It's honestly nice to get all of this stuff off my chest. I guess his talk with Liara really hammered home the reality of this situation for him. You know... I really only did all that extra stuff because I took you like being shoved around. I'm caught off guard by his remark. So Tremper did know how much I was enjoying all of that? That's why he always goes out of his way to shove me in his pits, smother me with his bear hugs, trample me with his stupid massive paws? Am I the only one just now putting this all together? How blind can I be? And I don't know. I just kinda went with it. Being the big jerk and all, I mistook it all as enthusiasm. But I guess I was wrong. And yeah, again, I'm sorry. I don't really know what else there is to say about it. Tremor. You big idiot. For once... You're not entirely wrong. The dog cocks his head. Ugh, God damn it! Don't make me spell it out for you. I sigh again. Yes, I fucking love that you're a big jerk. I love how much you love to crush me. Why do you think I've stuck around for so long with a huge don't like you? His eyes light up, and the weary look on his face eases up. <laughs> I knew it. 
and right back to being smug. Classic. I guess that's Guanisu solved, at least, huh? Well, mostly, but... Why the hell would you go out of your way to even do all of that in the first place? He gulps and his eyes widen. I don't think he was ready for that question. Tremor scratched the back of his head with a giant paw, scrambling to put together a cohesive sentence. Well, I, um, uh, w well, I, I really don't know how to put it, but... He gulps. Uh, I, uh, uh, I, uh... I really like you, okay? There. Fuck. We both stand in shocked silence. My ears are burning hot, my face is bright red. Here I've been feeling like the biggest dumbass on earth for having a crush on this guy. And he just blurts out that he feels the same way? Cars pass by on the street while we awkwardly wait for the other to say something. We must both look like such dumbasses out here right now, staring wordlessly at each other. I, uh, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. I'm sorry, and I will leave you alone. Tremor, wait. God damn it, you big lug. I, I, uh, I really like you too. Even with all the dumb bravado, all the showboating, just everything. It's hard to explain. I swear I can see his tail starting to wag. Ugh, you big dumb idiot, yes. Despite feeling like I got pulverized by a hydraulic press every Friday night, you're the reason I'm able to do what I love. And you do it well. It's hard work, but I know that you love it too. You can't fake that shit. So there. I like you. You like me. Now we're both just going to have to figure out what that means. Before I can say more, Tremor runs up and scoops me up off my feet into a tight hug. It's the first time being in his huge arms where he wasn't trying to beat me to a pulp. I let myself sink into his embrace. I can actually let myself enjoy it this time. That's when I remember. Ow. 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 Tremor, can you ease up a bit? I wince as his sturdy arms compress my aching torso. I'm still tender from being crushed by your huge ass, remember? He looks shocked and quickly sets me back down. I let out a sigh of relief. Oh shit, <laughs> shit, 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 I'm sorry. He settles for resting his massive paws on my shoulders, accompanied by a wagging tail and a goofy grin. I feel so dumb, but for the first time tonight, I also feel happy. Hell, this is the first time that I felt this good in a while. Neither of us knows what to say. It's awkward as hell, but the two of us are content with just standing and smiling and the stupid silence. This exchange has gone on long enough for the both of us to notice a long black limousine that has pulled up to where we are on the sidewalk. Ahem. Pardon me. I hope I'm not interrupting something, gentlemen. We immediately snap out of the moment, Tremor pulling his hands away awkwardly. We look over to see the voice came from a partially rolled down window. From behind the tinted glass, I clock a pair of sunglasses staring out at us, but it's difficult to make out much else. What the hell? How long has this limo been here? Uh... I look at Tremor and he only shrugs, clearly just as confused as I am. Kinda... can we help you? Well, I should certainly hope so. From the other side of the limo, a large line exits. He's wearing a well-tailored suit. It's gotta be custom made to. There's no way they make suits that big. Tremor and I take a step back, thoroughly confused and mildly concerned. The line suddenly strolls to the car door facing us, and I can see more clearly that the lion is also wearing some sort of mask concealing his face. The large feline wordlessly opens the passenger side door without acknowledging us. Out steps a black cat in a navy suit, also incredibly well put together. His eyes are partially concealed by a pair of gaudy sunglasses, and he places his hands on his sides. The masked lion stands solemnly behind the much shorter cat, while the two of them appear to be sizing Tremor and me up. Ahem. Well, pardon my sudden intrusion. I believe a proper introduction is in order. My name is Theo, Theo Black. Behind me is my lovely personal assistant, Fang. It is very nice to finally be meeting the two of you in person. 
Tremor and I exchange a quick confused glance. Then it clicks. Wait. Yeah, shit. This must be the guy Liara was talking to back at the venue. I haven't seen a lot of other weirdos like this out tonight. Wait. Who the hell are you? I saw you earlier tonight talking to my boss. Now you show up here? What gives? Oh, yes, Liara. A former colleague. She's actually the one who let me know where I might find the two of you after your show. Ah, well, as you may, or in this case, may not, be aware, I am the current commissioner of a little wrestling league. Perhaps you've heard of our organization. Does Clawstar Wrestling ring any bells? Clawstar? The fucking Clawstar Wrestling League? What? what? This pro stuff, like lights, cameras, broadcast professionals, is this guy serious? I'll take that as a yes. Very happy to have found the two of you together. You've saved me a little bit of time tonight. What the hell does the commissioner of Cloudstar League want with us? Are you here to recreate us or something? I am, actually. You can't be serious. Oh, but I am. I am here with an offer for the two of you. But it might not be what you were expecting. My heart sinks a bit. Wait, so what's a the job then? Are you just looking for stagehands? Because you can count me out. Nothing of the sort. Gentlemen, I am being quite serious here. I would ask the two of you to keep an open mind for a few moments while I explain. I wanted to make sure that the two of you were right for the task. And given our current location... Theo looks up at the sign for the lucky dog. Rainbow flags adorning the windows our eyes follow. What is he getting at? I believe I was correct in my initial assessment. I would ask you both very kindly to keep this conversation between us. Would that be alright? We both share a look, then nod cautiously, confused but intrigued. What most people associate Clawstar Wrestling with is our premier wrestling promotion. Big shows, big personalities, and above all else, quality entertainment. We have in addition to the main league, another, more, how shall I put this, secretive side of the organization. Still popular in its own right, but it hosts entertainment for a distinctly different clientele. Wait, are there two claw stars? Precisely. Well, what's the difference? I'm getting to that. A moment, please. Back to what you mentioned earlier, I was in fact speaking with Liara earlier. Liara used to be a competitor on our main stage. She was very good at it, she made enough money to retire and open her own wrestling promotion. But I have come to understand something about wrestling and what types of audiences it tends to draw in. There are those that are there for the typical acts of daring and bravado that take place within the ring. He pauses and shoots us a sly grin. And there are those who enjoy the show on a deeper level. They enjoy the thrilling intimacy of two men in close quarter combat. I've about reached my limit. My patience is starting to get the best of me. Can you just tell us what you're getting at with all of this? The cat sighs and adjusts his tie. You're no fun, but I suppose I owe you a direct answer. Gentlemen, I would like to extend to you an offer to compete in our... Midnight League. I assume this is your secret league. What's with all the mysterious crap? It's quite simple, really. Much like you would expect from any league, two men wrestle for dominance in front of a live audience. The main difference, however, is that to the victor goes the spoils. But simply, the winner gets to beat the loser for the crowd. What? what? Are you serious? You run porn matches? Is that even a thing? I know, I know. It may seem like a wild proposition. But I have come to realize that people love to see men duke it out to come out on top. The act of proving their power and taking their trophy right then and there. Wrestling is changing and we at the Midnight League are leading the way in these uncharted waters. What the hell am I even listening to? Some sort of secret sex wrestling cabal? 
You are probably thinking that this is some sort of elaborate ruse, but I assure you it is not. I am very serious about this offer. I have seen the two of you in the ring, and let's be honest, you are already one step removed from fucking each other already. Are you not? Tremor moves forward, his confusion quickly turning to agitation. Hey now, you listen here to little... Fang steps forward in front of Theo, facing the Hound without hesitation. This lying is the only one that I've seen that could match his size. I would wager a guess he knows how to use that brawn too. Tremor hesitates, then stops in his tracks. Theo gives a polite laugh before waving a hand to signal for Fang to back down. He resumes his position behind Theo with a gruff grunt. Now, now, no need to be hasty here. I spoke with Liara and she gave me your names as potential candidates. So what? You were just scouting earlier? Precisely. She normally wouldn't give me the time of day for trying to poach her wrestlers, but seemed eager for the two of you to move on to a bigger opportunity. Then what was all that shit Liara was talking about earlier? Tremor steps back, standing slight in front of me, while maintaining eye contact with the masked bodyguard. So what? You want us to get out there and have sex in front of a big crowd? Yes and no. As I explained, it's not too far off from your current routine. You will still be participating in a wrestling match, both of you. You two seem to have great chemistry together already, so it's a natural fit. He looks at Tremor. You, with your penchant for showmanship and unquestionable brute strength. Theo then turns to me. And you have a wide repertoire of ways to get safely steamrolled by Tremor here. I know a skilled jobber when I see one. It is my honest opinion that the two of you possess what it takes to do very well in the Midnight League. And it should go without saying. You will certainly be making much more per match than at the two-bit operation the hour runs. I can't help but feel defensive at the jab. Look, she tries her best to look out for us. Liara gave you an ultimatum tonight, did she not? Drop Tremor here or leave? I can see Tremor's dejected look at the remark. She's running a business, so am I. Right now, I am looking to expand our organization. Here, consider this an offer letter for tryouts. Theo snaps his finger and the mask line produces two slips of paper and hands us. I unfold the slip and begin to read. Wait, this can't be right. Wait, this much? Is this for real? $200,000 per year? I would go toe to toe with Tremor for half of that. I can't believe it. This guy appears out of nowhere and he's offering this insane salary for me to get crushed and fracked by the guy I have a crush on? What the fuck sort of fever dream am I in right now? I look over at Tremor. He seems to be just as stupefied by the situation as I am. You're like, what the hell? This is some joke, right? He gulps. I don't think so. Theo clears his throat as we grasp for words in an attempt to bring us back to the present. This is, of course, an offer that is being made on the condition of trial performance. You will be required to wrestle each other in front of a promotional match. We need to ensure that the two of you are up to the task before moving forward. Theo looks between us, awaiting our reaction. I'm not sure. Wrestling is one thing, but... He gives me a concerned look. Are you really okay going through with something like this? This is all moving pretty quick, and I don't want to, you know, make things weird between us. We only just made some sort of uh, breakthrough here. I take a few moments to think. Really think. While Tremor isn't entirely wrong about how weird all of this has been, why shouldn't we at least try? Do I want to get flattened by a big sweaty dog, then get railed by him in front of a massive crowd that's cheering him on? Crushed by a guy who knows how much you fucking love being under his huge body? Am I prepared to get wrestled by a mountain of a man who is incredibly hot and isn't afraid to remind me of it every fucking opportunity? 
Tremor. I'm practically shaking at this. Let's fucking do this. He looks shocked. Yeah, let's fucking accept the offer. Why the hell shouldn't we? Well, I, um... <laughs> well... Look, what he said is right. When we're out there in the ring, and you're destroying me with that stupid huge ass of yours, it's all I can do to hide how much I'm loving it. Tremor looks a bit dumbfounded. He can act embarrassed all he wants, but he can't hide his wagging tail. Why not let ourselves enjoy it for once? Are you... entirely sure? I don't think I've ever been more sure than I am right now. He nods. Okay, if you're ready for it, then so am I. We both turn back to Theo. Count me in. Me too. The black cat claps his hands together and grins wide. Ah, excellent news, gentlemen. Just wonderful. I have already taken the liberty of collecting your contract information from Liar, so we will be in touch soon to go over the particulars. I am grateful to you both for hearing me out this evening. Theo bows dramatically as the line opens a door for him to step back inside. Ta-ta, you two. Sorry for interrupting you. We'll let the two of you enjoy the rest of your evening. Oh, and one more thing. Fang hands us both a business card. It's gorgeous, gold lettering, and filigree around the edges. Why is this guy so extra? If you need anything for your match, feel free to reach out. I look forward to the next time we see each other. The lion re-enters on his side of the vehicle, so Theo rolls his window up. And, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the limousine disappears into the night streets. Tremor and I are right back where we left off. Speechless, confused, and a bit tipsy, it's going to take some time to really process any of this. I look up to Tremor. Neither one of us seems to believe what we just went through was real. Such a wide gamut of emotions in such a short amount of time. And now I'm just left with confusion. Well, where do we go from here? Tremor still looks shell-shocked. He shrugs. No fucking clue. Did you want to get back inside, I guess? I look back at the bar and I see Arlo peeking his head out from the heavy door. He's probably just checking in on the two of us. I forgot that it wasn't long ago that I stormed out in a hurry. I think I got a better idea. I wrap my arms around Tremors, taking him by surprise. How about you and me head back to my place for now? Maybe we can get some practice in for this midnight league now that we know what we're up against. He shoots me a confused look. Wait, like wrestling practice? Isn't it a bit late for that? I thought... I sigh. No, dumbass. It takes a second for him to process my coy invitation. Oh! Oh! Yeah! Yeah! Let's practice. His tail thwaps into me. Every part of this man is big and clumsy, and I can't help but laugh about it. I send a wave back to Arlo giving him the all clear, and we start walking arm in arm towards my apartment. I definitely owe Arlo one. Are your friends back there going to be alright? I told him to fuck off when I chased you out, so I really don't care. Heh, <laughs> such a gentleman. Oh, shut up. He pulls me in for a playful headlock, and for once, I don't have to act like I hate being toyed by him. Most of the night from there is a bit of a blur. The highlights include some more conversations about our concealed feelings for each other, and of course... We made out. A lot. Turns out he's a sloppy kisser. Tremor and I are sitting in the locker room for the Clawstar Wrestling League, waiting for our trial match. Two weeks since we took Theo up on his offer, it's hard to believe that we're actually here. It feels unreal to even think about. I never imagined myself actually making it to the big leagues. Of course I had dreamed about it, but getting here under these circumstances. I shake my head and look over to Tremor. He seems a bit more reserved before the match than usual. His typical pre-game ritual of taunting about how he's going to squash me flat in the ring isn't needed now that we've dropped our facades. It's more of a implicit agreement at this point. I've been spending more and more time with Tremor over these two weeks, both in and out of the ring. Getting to know him more as a person and less as an idiot 
who was making my life difficult has been a nice change of pace. We've also been going over some fundamental concepts, things Tremor tends to neglect in the ring. He's actually been receptive to the feedback I've been giving for once. And of course, we've been trying to figure out how we're going to approach this new set of rules for the Midnight League. The main point both of us has been stressing about is the post-match ceremony. Having sat in front of an audience is a big change from our previous gigs, but what Theo told us that night still stuck with me. Getting manhandled and grinded on by a huge half-naked dude isn't too far off from f***ing each other, right? Having spectators for the deed, though. I can hear them even now from back here. There's a huge crowd out there tonight, all excited to see sweaty men grope and f*** each other. I'm trying my best to retain my composure, but I can't help but feel anxious about the whole situation. Tremor looks over to me sitting on the bench. He makes his way over and pats me on the shoulder. His rough paw slapped me hard enough to make me snap out of it. Hey. Hey, yourself. You are not getting cold feet, are you? We can still back out if you're not feeling up to this. Hearing him express concern for someone other than himself is weird. Nice, but weird. Not a chance. This is all just a lot to take in at once. We've done this so many times, right? So far as I'm concerned, it's just gonna be another Friday night. You don't sound entirely convinced, you know. I'm fine, really. I've got you here with me, so I know that if we stick to our usual routine, we'll be just fine. Tremor beams and gives me another rough pat on the back. Ow. That's what I like to hear. Don't be surprised if I bust out a few new moves, though. I have been waiting to get my hands on you like this for a while. We just have a kick for me to get away doing with them now. <laughs> he gives me a big toothy grin. That's a little concerning, but in a fun way. What does this big lug have in store for me? In that case, I'll try to follow your lead. I can take anything you throw my way. I don't doubt it. You're always pretty eager to get flattened. Remember though, this time I get to f*** you at the end of the match. How could I forget? I would be lying if I said that wasn't part of the reason I agreed to this. He ruffles my head for and I slap his massive paw away. Yeah, yeah, you know how I love getting crushed by your huge ass anyways. So, we both get to have some fun out there. The big dog flexes his massive biceps and gives me a confident but reassuring look. Hell yeah! What a dumbass. I can't help but smile along with him seeing that goofy grin. Any trace of worry I have is gone now. I feel comfortable now that Tremor is watching out for me. From around the corner, we hear Theo's familiar voice call out to us. Glad to see that you two are all fired up. He rounds the corner to greet us. The black cat is dressed in yet another fine suit. This one is a deep red and black. I bet he has one for each day of the week. Sure, um, I'm ready to get out there and give them all a show they won't forget. I pump a fist in agreement. Yeah, we've been busting our asses getting ready for tonight. Theo claps his hands together and gives us a pleased grin. Good, good. I'm glad to see you gentlemen so eager to get out there. But remember... He lowers his glasses a bit. I can see his eyes narrow over the rims. His tone shifts to that of a seasoned businessman. I must impress upon both of you how important tonight's event will be. Both for you and for me. There's a lot of money on the line with a promotional match like this. So I want the two of you to go out there and give it your all. Nothing to worry about, boss. We have been working on our routine, and I know the crowd's gonna heat it up. Theo chuckles, content with Tremor's response. I'm delighted to see that the two of you approach this with such enthusiasm. No need to hold back when you get to the main event, either. Our patrons will be expecting to see you get wild. Well... We've been practicing that part as well. I shoot a sly glance at Tremor and his eyes widen. Looks like my remark caught him off guard. <laughs> you well, yeah, of course. We are well past the point of being shy, gentlemen. Give these people a bit of raunch, and I have no doubt that they will fall in love with you. You can count on it. 
Tremor laughs loudly and scoops me into a side headlock, squeezing tight. I try in vain to push him off before Theo claps his hands to grab our attention. All right, all right. Save it for the ring, you two. You're up soon, so I want you both to be on standby. The announcer will call your names one by one, and then it's showtime. Are you ready? Tremor releases my neck from his grip, glad to know that he's already fired up. We both nod at Theo. Good. I wish you two the best of luck. The cat begins to exit but turns around for a last remark. And don't forget to have some fun. With that, his tail swishes and he is gone from our sight. I stand and face Tremor, while both wearing the same big idiotic grin. It's strange. To think that this guy was one of my main sources of stress in my life just two weeks ago. Now it's hard for me to even imagine where I'd be without him. Getting flattened every Friday night used to be something that I dreaded, but now that we don't have to act like we're not enjoying ourselves, who knows? We might just be able to pull this thing off. We have to do. You know what? Fuck that. We are going to pull this off. There's no way either of us are going to let this opportunity slip by. A voice rings over the intercom while I'm psyching myself up. Attention, attention! attention. Our, attention. Next Our next match, match will, will be starting, starting soon. soon. We have we a have special a treat in store for all of you. Two, two new wrestlers, wrestlers making their debut, debut in the Midnight, Midnight League. League. I guess that's our cue. Tremor nods and reaches out his hand for a fist bump. Let's give him hell. We bump fists and head towards the stage. First up, weighing in at 170 pounds, 5 foot 7 inches, he's the kid with a can-do attitude, fast as a flash and string like a bee. It's... Elijah the Comet! I take a deep breath. As my name is announced, I step out from the backstage and head down the walkway. The Comet, huh? That's new. I like it. I don't get a chance to ponder it long, as the cheering from the crowd quickly overpowers my thoughts. The stadium is packed, considering this is such an obscure wrestling league. I'm astonished by the sheer size of this crowd. The pressure in the air is immense. I arrive at the ring and hop the rope with a bit of flair. I need to make a good first impression here. I try to get a good warm up in while I'm pumping up the crowd. A few cheers and fist pumps from the crowd while I get a feel for the ring. During this act, I lean against the ropes to get a feel for their tension. I want to make sure that I know what I'm working with here. These things aren't just something that you bounce off of without knowing what you're doing. After I'm satisfied with my initial check of the ring, I head to my corner and face the entrance. Let's see how Tremor fares with this crowd. And his, and his opponent, opponent tonight, tonight coming, coming in, in at a at monstrous 530 pounds, pounds, a towering 6 feet 6 inches of pure Leon, Leon Burger. The, the terrible, terrible Titan, Titan himself, himself. Tremor! The crowd erupts in cheers. They don't hide who they're really here to see in this match. Who can blame them, though? I watch as Tremor steps out onto the walkway and struts to the ring. He's a natural at this, of course. I've never seen someone so sure of himself. While our old promotion didn't have anything nearly this elaborate, Tremor acts like he does this every single night. Cheering and hollering, fist pumping and shouting, the audience is in love from the get-go. Tremor makes his way up to the edge of the ring, and presses the ropes down to step over for entry. The bigger wrestler stops in the center of the ring and takes a good look around. He's sizing up the crowd. It's time for his signature move. Tremor crosses his arms and slowly starts to bend his knees. Here it comes. With a sudden burst of speed, he jumps up and throws his hands in the air, stomping down on the mat with tremendous force. I can feel the reverberations as he lands, even the ropes are shaking from the impact. The sound of the crash is loud enough to cut over the thunderous noise of the crowd. We lock eyes, his smug grin has now shifted to his game face, we're in our element now. He walks backwards to the opposing corner, giving the crowd a wink and point before slumping back against the turnbuckle. I'm not gonna let the immense drone of the applause distract me. Right now, it's just me and Tremor, and we've got a job to do. You ready, Shortstack? 
It's hard to hear him, but just loud enough. Show me what you've got. I push myself off from the corner as I hear the bell. Trevor does the same while rolling his arms, walking towards me. We meet in the center of the ring, our typical stare down at the start of the match. Tremor towers over me with a devilish grin on his face, his arms rest crossing his massive chest. There's still some time if you want to back out, you know? Otherwise, you're my plating going till that bell rings again. Still the same smug tremor. I can't help but smirk at it as I retort. You're gonna have to earn it, big guy. I'm not going down without a fight. Wouldn't want it to be too easy for you now, would I? He chuckles. In that case... Tremor winds back for a big blow, looking like we're getting started now. He over-exaggerates the pull, giving me enough time to duck under a big swing, slow and powerful. Now's my chance to show him that I'm not going to be the pushover that he's used to. We've got to give this crowd a good show. I dodge behind him as he swings and I land a swift kick to his side as he's turning back around. My foot is met with thick, massive muscle. I doubt that I would be able to leave a bruise on this beast, even if I was using my full effort. <laughs> not bad, not bad. The huge dog shrugs it off. Did he even feel that? He turns to face me and I stand in anticipation for his next move. Tremor lunges forward, both hands outstretched. He's trying to lock me up in a hold. There's no way that I'm winning a test of strength against this brute. I try to think fast, spot an opening. There, underneath him. I'm able to take advantage of our size difference by sliding between his legs as he rushes forward. In one swift motion, I slip past him and dart towards the ropes. I make contact and rebound off the ropes, picking up speed. Tremor turns back around just in time for me to launch myself at him. I land a drop kick to the center mass with a good amount of momentum behind me. Both my feet find their mark and I press off with both legs for a clean recovery. I land with a bit of flair and shoot him a smirk. I know he felt that one. I return to my ready stance as Tremor tries to catch his balance. He looks at me with an impressed grin. Looks like little Jobber has been holding back on me this whole time, huh? You afraid I'll be the one fucking you at the end of this match? Tremor lets out a hearty <laughs> laugh. <laughs> Not a chance, but it's going to make crushing you that much more satisfying. He steps towards me with his chest held out. I back up to keep a good distance between us, but he stops as soon as he's in the center of the ring. I circle around him slowly, waiting for my next move, but he seems content holding his position for now. I can't keep on the defensive like this for much longer. You're not getting tired already, are you? He smirks. Someone's feeling cocky tonight. You must really want to get pounded. I am not even warmed up yet, Dwerp. Before I can retort, Tremor charges at me. With a surprising amount of speed, he holds a stiff arm out to his side, telegraphing a huge clothesline. Here's my chance to counter. With only a split second to act, I drop to the mat right before the blow lands. I use the giant's own momentum against him as I sweep his legs and trip him up. The sudden maneuver is enough to catch him off guard, and he falls to the mat face first with a thundering clash. I scramble back up to my feet and take position in the middle of the ring. The audience roars in approval. It feels weird to have them on my side for once. The sound is almost overwhelming. It's starting to sink in now just how many people are in here in this arena, but I try to shake it off. I can't get distracted now. Focus, focus, we're still just getting started. Tremor slowly gets back up to his feet, laughing. <laughs> you little shit! You were this good all along, weren't you? I never will have guessed you got it in you. His toothy grin turns devious. Well, I hope you had your fun, because it's my door now. He charges at me again, but I'm able to duck under and run past with little effort. Why is he going for the same move twice in a row? Well, if it worked the first time, I'll try to keep using my speed to keep him off balance. I rebound off the ropes, and as I shift directions, I see that Trevor has done the same. He wasn't aiming for me. Wait, a fend? Oh shit. It's too late to stop this momentum. The bigger wrestler closes the distance and now whatever measly counterattack I had planned has gone out the window. Tremor smashes his massive body into me at full speed. I impact against his solid slab of beef and go tumbling down to the mat. 
He doesn't let up. The mountain of muscle and fur comes crashing down on top of me in a powerful full body press, his massive frame completely enveloping me. <laughs> he rises back to his feet while I lay trying to catch my breath. It takes me a few seconds to get back to my senses. Looking up, I see that same smug grin looking back down at me. He looks so pleased with himself. Ready to have some fun, buddy? Before I can respond, a massive paw reaches down to pull me back to my feet. Tremor is able to pick me up effortlessly. I struggle to find my footing, but the big dog doesn't release his grip. Instead, I feel him winding up for the next move. He pulls me back up with his brutish strength, one hand pushing on my back. With one forceful shove, he sends me running into the corner, a classic Irish whip. I turn and slam into the turnbuckles, hearing the audience jeer as I make contact. It stings, but I catch myself on the ropes to either side. I look up, Tremor is already barreling towards me, and I grip the ropes to brace for the impact. In an instant, he spins just before the impact to ram his massive back into me, the unmitigated force of his body slamming into me, squeezing out the air in my lungs. The spectators cheer as he crashes into me, and Tremor takes his sweet time to let me feel just how huge he really is. The huge dog keeps me pinned to the corner, slowly grinding his massive body onto my aching torso. Doing all right, but there, beep squeak, not too heavy for you. I groan as I try to push off the massive brute, but he isn't budging. No way in hell am I going to be able to shove him off of me. That's what I thought. You're just having a grand old time, aren't you? What's he getting at now? Tremor slowly starts to rock his hips against my crotch. Oh shit, oh shit. It dawns on me. I am fucking rock hard. My boner is pressed directly into Tremor's wide backside. Fuck, he noticed that before I did again. I can feel his massive ass slowly and deliberately barreling down on me. Oh fuck. I stifle a moan as he moves teasingly back and forth. So this is your new <laughs> move? The massive dog looks back over his shoulder, leaning further back into me. Oh, this? This is just a goof. He sounds so satisfied, so smug. Tremor is using his full weight to grind against me, so delighted by how much I'm enjoying the sensation. Looks like I gotta show this little jobber his place. He chuckles, clearly enjoying himself. The crowd is eating it up. Not too chatty now, are you, Bob? I try to retort, but I'm at a loss of words. My focus is fading as he continues to toy with me. Tremor finally eases his full weight off my body, but he still keeps me firmly wedged behind him in the corner. You're gonna want to hang tight for this next beat. He pulls his hips forward and suddenly slams his backside into my torso. <clears throat> After the blow, Tremor steps away from the turnbuckle, leaving me to slump down on my ass. I gasp at the ropes on either side of me to try to brace myself. I'm still a bit dazed, but I can see him standing there in the center of the ring. Arms pumping, boasting, showboating as always. Hard to deny how skilled he is at getting the crowd riled up. They're eating out of the palm of his hand. Then there's me, still planted firmly in the corner, catching my breath still pitching a massive tent. I might feel embarrassed if I could actually feel anything right now. I lock eyes with Tremor, his grin as wide as ever. He slowly starts to make his way over to me. The huge dog takes his sweet time as he saunters towards me, reveling in the roar of the crowd. Oh fuck, what's with that look in his eyes? What's he planning next? I try to get to my feet, but my body is not cooperating. By the time I can get my legs moving to even attempt to stand up, Tremor towers over me. I gulp as I stare back up at him. There's that evil grin of his. Without a word, he makes a swift turn, and I am now face to face with his backside. He makes sure that I have plenty of time to appreciate all the glory before. Oh shit! Thwomp! His massive ass presses into my face, trapping my muzzle between his two hefty cheeks. I can feel his entire body press into me as he slowly starts to grind down, wedging me further in. The sensation is overwhelming. His scent fills my snout and completely takes over all of my other senses. 
I'm overwhelmed by the smell of sweat, only barely masked by the fragrance of cheap body wash. My arm struggles as I push against his firm ass cheeks, but to no avail. I might as well be trying to move a mountain. He continues to move his hips, slowly and deliberately. I feel my dick leaking like a faucet. I swear I would have probably blown my load right now if I weren't putting all of my effort into staying conscious. Damn it, I shouldn't be enjoying any of this. Why does Tremor know just the right moves for me? It takes every bit of focus I have just to endure the immense pressure. He's getting great pleasure rubbing his rear all over my face. I just know I'm going to smell like him on my muzzle for weeks after this. After what feels like a short eternity, Tremor seems satisfied with my humiliation. He relents, standing back up to the cheers of the crowd. I wildly gasp for a breath of fresh air, and Tremor turns back and around to loom over me, pleased with his work. How about we wrap this up? The bigger wrestler grabs me by my scruff and lifts me into the air. I'm disorientated by the sudden movement, but I quickly realize that I'm being turned upside down. Tremor has pulled me in close, belly to belly, arms wrapped around my torso, while he walks back to the center of the ring. My face is wedged between his legs, and I can feel his hard crack rubbing up against my snout. This is it. The big finisher. The earthquake. My legs stand vertical as I cling into his massive body. I try to brace myself. This one's gonna hurt. I notice that he's walking slower than usual, talking up the crowd. That's unexpected. Tremor's giving me a chance to adjust myself, a luxury I'm rarely afforded with him. With a few minor shifts in position, I'm ready. I give Tremor a subtle squeeze on the thigh to let him know. Time slows down for me as Tremor leaps off the ground. The two of us are now airborne. In that sudden burst of moment, I feel gravity start to shift all around me as we tip forward. We're falling. In a split second, his massive body slams down on top of me. Our bodies crash onto the mat with a massive thud. I'm completely flattened under his mass. Once again, breathless, pinned by the giant dog's body. Tremor lays there on top of me, ready for the count. Despite being smothered by the warm crotch, I can still hear the crowd as they chant in unison with the announcer. One, two, three. The audience erupts a deafening cheer. Tremor pushes himself up to sit on his knees to bask in their idolation while my head remains trapped underneath his hefty crotch. My body is bruised and battered, but I am in heaven right now. My snout is pressed up beneath his balls. Tremor lets me enjoy the moment, panting heavily and slowly teasing me by swaying his hips. He stands up, raising a fist in victory for the crowd before turning back down to look at me. I squint up to see the dumb look on his face, so proud of himself for squashing the jobber. God, what a jerk. I can't help but smile back up at him. Looks like you're enjoying yourself out there, huh? He chuckles. Show's not over yet, though. Ready for round two? Oh, fuck. He's right. Oh, fuck. I am now draped over his shoulder. Tremor is making it known that I'm his prize and that he's proudly showing off his trophy. I dangle in his grasp as he gives his final cheer to the audience. I have no energy left to resist, but there's an odd comfort in his grasp. Nice work out there. You... too... jerk. That's all I can muster right now. <laughs> he chuckles. He exits the ring and heads up the walkway with me still in his shoulder. I'm not sure how to feel about being carried away by this brute, but I'm starting to realize I could get used to this. And that's when we exit the stage and spot Theo sporting a wide, pleased grin. I get the feeling that I'll get that opportunity. And that is it for Claw Star Wrestling. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed reading it. Because believe it or not, I actually did. Hee 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 hee. <laughs> um, and a big thanks obviously to Bear for being the voice of Tremor, and Orion for doing the voice of Arlo. And I was going to have somebody else voice um, the little, the cat dude in the back, the promoter, 
But um, unfortunately, that kind of fell through. So, yeah. Oh, well. Anywho. So, yeah. Write down in the comments what you thought. Obviously, there was a big scene right there missing. But, um, you know, that's why you go and download this visual novel and read it yourself so that you can see what's going on. Uh, but yeah. Admittedly, you guys know that I'm not a big fan of, like, NSFW visual novels, but this one I had to make an exception for because it was, um, right up my alley, I guess you could say. And that's all I'm gonna say about it. <laughs> Anyways, um, but yeah. So again, write down in the comments what you thought, and if you would like to read it, then you can find it over on Itch. And I will post a link down for Horror Buns' uh, Twitter page, which hopefully is still there because we all know that Twitter is collapsing right now. Thanks to a certain somebody. Yeah. Anyways, um, but yeah. Horror Buns' Twitter will have a direct link to the visual novel, but you do have to be 18 and over to read it. So if you're not, then too bad. You're going to have to wait. You're going to have to wait your turn to ooh, read that steamy scene that I did not include. Actually, I should say that I couldn't include. But yeah, um, anywho, um, I guess that's it for now, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.